Today we have a very interesting uh, cycle of information because uh, we observed on another public television station uh, one of the most uh, really defining uh, discussions about epilepsy. And uh, today we have uh, someone who is a program manager of the Epilepsy Alliance of Florida, and uh, that is Amaya Saunders. Welcome, Ms. Saunders. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Tell us about uh, the programmatic, uh, I guess you could say, elements of uh, the Epilepsy Foundation. Um, great. So we are Epilepsy Alliance Florida. We're no longer epilepsy. Yes. No, no worries. No worries. Um, right. So we are a nonprofit organization and we really want to leverage the community to make sure that we are equipped and we provide all sorts of programs and resources for those um, living with epilepsy. So um, specifically, the program that I am um, oversight of is prevention and education. Um, so what we offer is trainings, resources, um, we go out to health fairs in the community and we really equip the uh, the people that we engage with with information about epilepsy. Um, we do seizure first aid trainings in schools. Um, we do helmet fittings for children that uh, for children at certain locations for health fairs, um, really blanketing the community with as much information and resources about epilepsy that we can. People don't understand what epilepsy is and what it does. So right. can you give us some view uh, of what happens in the individual? I'm not asking you to be the medical doctor here, but I'm asking you to provide information that you provide to the general community uh, from the Alliance. Of course, of course. So um, a seizure is a sudden uncontrollable burst of electrical activity in the brain. So it causes changes in one's behavior, their movements, their feelings, and um, their levels of consciousness. Mm -hmm. So we describe epilepsy as having two or more seizures at least 24 hours apart that don't have any, um, really any cause. Um, that's when we look at an epilepsy diagnosis. And we typically see um, a few generalized onset seizures that are the most typical, and that's going to be the absent seizure, which is also referred to as the uh, petite mal seizure, the myoclinic seizure, and the tonic-clonic seizures, which are usually the ones that you see where people are convulsing and jerking uncontrollably. Um, so that's just basis, the basis of epilepsy and um, pretty much the foundation of it that we give to the, the information that we give to who we come in contact to. Let me ask you this, uh, because it, it has come, uh, we, we we have been doing these programs now for 26 years, and most of the reasons why we want people like yourself to come on and give us information is because the public out there has asked questions. Uh, the, if, the, if you can define or communicate or talk, talk about the difference between a mal seizure and a seizure, um, well, seizures really look different in everybody. Um, your tonic clonic seizure is going to be, like I said, when you're, uh, you're going to see the uncontrollable jerking. Um, that's usually when people think of seizures, the tonic clonic seizure is what they're usually referring to in their mind. That's what's mostly depicted. Um, if it's on that, maybe we've seen a seizure or something like played out on TV. That's usually the ones that we see. Um, now the, that's going to be the grand mal seizure. We also have those, those drop attacks. Um, those can be tonic seizures as well. Those petite mal seizures, those are, can be like the staring spells, um, where you just see somebody just, they might be having, engaging in a conversation with you and they just stop and they're frozen. And people, they 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 might have consciousness. They might be able. They are able to hear you, but they're not able to re to respond. Um, so those are really the differences in the seizures that we um, kind of depict when we do our trainings. How do you get a, across to? Because we had a, a number of basically moms that have asked us about these uh, communication with the public school systems, both public and private, uh, as to how do they get information that prevents 
their children from being denied or being made, uh, I get fun of. That's a simple, simple. Right. Um, so definitely what we try to do is uh, join as many school coalitions as we can um, and be a part of those conversations so that we're able to engage with those parents when they have questions like that. I would say to any parents that are worried about a stigma um, associated with any type of epilepsy diagnosis, that's when you want to contact us and you want to bring us into that school setting so that we can do trainings um, for that setting. So, you know, in your child's classroom, people are informed about epilepsy and they know that anybody with a brain can have epilepsy. The statistics say one in 26 people will be diagnosed with epilepsy at some time in their life. So dogs have seizures, people have seizures, you know, it's not something that is a plague or something that, um, you know, makes you an outcast amongst, you know, society. It's just something that people live with, um, just like they live with any other type of diagnosis or disorder. Um, so what I would really say to any of the parents that are worried about the stigma that's associated is um, really look into contacting us. That's what we do. We go into the schools, we train, we give information, we give resources, and we help um, disassociate that stigma with epilepsy. You know, <clears throat> here at Nova Southeastern University, we have a plethora of, of programmatic, I guess you could say, presentations. Everything from everything in healthcare to the law school to the business school to uh, be it school of education, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but, you know, um, there are times that people, and, and, I, and maybe you can give some content to what at least what we get from the individuals who write to us, people feel they have to leave their job because they're ashamed. Why should someone be ashamed when it's it's something? I mean, I I don't want to make it over simplistic, but if you have a a, a cold, uh, you have a cough, and you show up for uh, your your responsible job responsibility, uh, people don't look at you. They don't they don't they're not fearful of you. But what I hear from the people who ask those questions is there is a certain built-in, I guess you could say, almost near like fear of letting others know that this is what it is. How do you deal with that? I would definitely, like I said, I we, we equate kind of like that fear um, and that stigma of epilepsy with just misinformation and that's across the board with anything that people are kind of fearful of it's because they they don't really know about it they're not informed about it and they have they don't deal with it on a daily basis obviously with seizures it can happen at any time in any moment so that's more of kind of the um i would say anxiety that's associated with it is because you know when you do have epilepsy you, you can have a seizure at any time whether it's at work um if i had epilepsy i could be you know uh, I could have a seizure right now during this interview, but I would say that it's really misinformation from the people that we are surrounded by that that bring that fear. So I would say the more that you can um, inform others, the more that they can be exposed to the information and then they, they can learn, they can they can uh, be taught how to deal with you when you have a seizure. Um, how to support you. And I think that obviously when we're equipped with the information, we have that confidence and that expels that fear out. You spoke earlier and I didn't get to it, but uh, can you talk to us about uh, the passage of the Florida law care of uh, students and with epilepsy and seizure disorders? Right. Um, so there is an unfunded mandate that passed um, in Ju on July 1st, 2022. Um, it's HB 173. It's called Care of Students with Epilepsy or Seizures Disorders. Now, this mandate is going to require the coordination of the provision of uh, epilepsy and seizure disorder care at the school for students, including administrative administering anti-seizure and rescue addition medication. And it requires school personnel whose duties include regular contact with the student, to complete training in the care of students with epilepsy and seizure disorders. Um, now this training also has to include recognizing the symptoms of seizures and providing care for epilepsy and seizure disorders. Does the 
legislation refer to only the public system or does it refer to all licensed uh, venues that are called places of education in the state of Florida? Yes. So um, across the board, anybody who is um, in a school personnel setting that has any type of um, communication contact with anybody with an epilepsy diagnosis needs to be trained in seizure first aid recognition, re recognition and rescue medication dissemination. Does this uh, deal with more than just, say, the uh, what I would call the uh, the school children who are pre-K up to pre up to twelve? Does it also involve itself, for example? I can understand the state only having a, um, a direct influence, and I don't know the elements of this law, uh, the state influence on the state-sponsored or sp state-supported institutions. There are a number of private, not-for-profit, and private for-profit uh, education venues. Right. So it is for private public schools, daycares, um, school school personnel, child care settings, all uh, in one. If you are caretaking in the school setting for someone who has an epilepsy diagnosis, the HB, HB 173 mandate will apply. Um, so that's really actually what we're doing right now in my program. We're sending out those letters to superintendents, to daycares, to public and private schools and letting them know about this legislation. Um, with school ending, that's usually when all the teachers and uh um, the principals can get those trainings done, all of the annual trainings that the teachers need. So we try to go in at this time and make sure that everybody's compliant with this legislation. The, does the Epilepsy Alliance, and I, I guess I'm, I, I, I use the word proactive, go out and communicate with, the, I mean, for example, most of the viewing audience that will be listening to you today uh, come from Palm Beach, Broward, Dade counties. And uh, there are so many different uh, venues uh, that uh, this would, uh, pro according to your discussion about the law, touch. But who does the overview? How, how does, what does, does someone come to the Alliance and say, listen, in my school, they don't do this. Uh, now, that, that doesn't mean that they're angry at anybody, but they're looking for help from the Alliance. So, so how do you respond? Um, so d definitely, we definitely have cases where people reach out and say, like, I've heard of this, but um, I know that, you know, I haven't taken any trainings or it hasn't been implemented here. Um, and that and that's really what we want. We want as much as we're proactive and getting the information out, we want people to be proactive and making sure that, you know, they're they're being compliant and that they're equipped with the information. Because um, like I said, seizures can happen at any time. Um, so really, we welcome we welcome people coming to us and, and letting us know that, you know, they they need these these trainings or they need our resources and they need our help. So um, I would definitely say that that we welcome that and that we, we are glad to get those questions. And when they do happen, um, they they can come through. So in my program, we have community resource specialists. So they're really the ones that are the boots on the ground going out into the community. So oftentimes people do reach out to them. And when that does happen, um, we take it as any other call. We let them know like, hey, we can be available at this time, this date to you know come in and do the trainings. Uh, we offer a wide variety of tra trainings, not just seizure first aid. Um, so we really just, you know, schedule the day and we, we go out and make sure that the training is done. We also do it virtually online as well. We have on-demand trainings as well. So you can either have us come out in person and do the training or you can do it um, online. Do you think that there is some opportunity for the Alliance to perhaps uh, coordinate with the individuals that created the, the Florida law to allow the people to be able to make statements about their situation with epilepsy. 
Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And I'm so glad that 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 was brought to you. And that and that's something that um, I'm actually going to take away with me from this interview. Um, we actually go to Capital Day in Tallahassee uh, in November annually, and we advocate for different things, different subjects, different um, laws that we want to see passed. Um, and that would definitely be a subject that we would love to advocate for. Um, I think that's imperative to um people with epilepsy being able to, you know, disclose those those uh, critical details is definitely needed. Now, let me ask you this. Uh, do I also believe, uh, as another person asked the question, is, you know, where the state of Florida is, uh, is strewn with, uh, I shouldn't say strewn, we're lucky to have the, the greatest number of people over the age of 75 of uh, with the greatest percentage of any state in the union and also with the number one state in the union with people over the age of 80 uh, and god bless them all uh, but some of these people do have epilepsy uh, i think the person that wrote to us communicated directly of course i could never use his name or i couldn't pass it on but uh, the bottom line is he, that person said I have epilepsy, and I live in an, an adult living facility, ALF. You know, you see that in advertised in newspapers, on television, or whatever. They're wonderful venues. They're not nursing homes. They're venues where similar and like people are living, all right? Uh, I'm just wondering whether you would, there's another thing for the uh, Epilepsy Alliance, perhaps to communicate with some of the larger or whoever, the ALF venues or the ALF, they have an association also that is lobby in Tallahassee. Uh, so when you go, you might want to communicate with them because I really think the information that you disseminate relative to epilepsy would be very important to these people who want to live the rest of their long lives Absolutely. I, I agree. Um, and I can't give too much detail on it because it's not my particular project um, that I oversee, but I know that uh, residential housing for um, those with epilepsy, epilep epilepsy diagnosis is something that we are currently working on um, and wanting to go out into the community and provide um, a place of community where people that do have epilepsy can dwell, dwell together and be comfortable and live independently and be able to uh, be taken care of. So that is definitely something that we are working on on our end as well. Good. Uh, since I would assume that the Alliance, the Epilepsy Alliance of Florida is a not-for-profit organization, correct? Correct. So we're going to give you the opportunity uh, and if you would pass on to our staff uh, the way to contact Epilepsy Alliance of Florida, and perhaps uh, you will be able to receive some kind uh, donations. So uh, we, we don't mind uh, for other not-for-profits to seek some help. Uh, we are a not-for-profit university here at Nova Southeastern University, and uh, we, we have a lot of uh, prominent uh, people and people that support uh, great education. I wouldn't say good education, I would say great education. And I'm sure that your work is uh, looked upon with great uh, fondness. Uh, what should any, someone do uh, that experiences uh, some uh, situation? For example, John, John well, Mary Q. Citizen is walking through Publix. All right, and someone has a seizure. Uh, what is suggested by the alliance? Right. So definitely, if uh, you see anybody having a seizure in any type of setting, you're gonna first and foremost you're gonna run a, want to remain calm. Um, you're gonna want to remain calm. Try to keep everybody that is around calm. Um, if the person is convulsing and jerking and uh, moving uncontrollably up and down, you're going to want to move them to their side. You're not going to want to put anything in their mouth. Don't try to restrain them. You're going to want to keep track of how long the seizure um, lasts. You're going to want to stay with the person and not abandon them. Um, and you're going to want to just stay there, provide uh, support until the seizure stops. 
Um, once they uh, regain, you know, awareness, you want to just talk to them, let them know what just happened. Um, and if the seizure uh, lasts long, then I believe five minutes, you're going to want to call the um, the ambulance. But for first and foremost, but all in all, you're going to want to stay calm, just provide support, make sure that they're on their side, you're not putting anything in their mouths, and that you're keeping time of how long the seizure is happening. Let me ask you another question uh, I was going to ask you earlier. Uh, who is eligible for training uh, programs on epilepsy? Anyone. Anyone and everyone. Um, like I said, we said the statistics is one in 26 uh, will develop ep epilepsy. And anybody who has a brain, which is all of us on this planet, um, are susceptible to having a seizure at any time. So we offer training to anyone that is interested, whether you work in the school setting, if you work in the grocery store at Publix, if you work in the movies, if you're a crossing guard, we want everybody to be equipped with the information. We really want to blanket the community with this information so that that stigma and that fearfulness subsides. We're down to the last few minutes of the broadcast. So I'm going to ask you as the program manager, uh, Miss Mrs. Sonia, uh, say what you want to say representing the Epilepsy Alliance of Florida. Oh, definitely. Um, I would say that we are a group that is passionate about helping those with epilepsy. Um, I think passion is what um, definitely separates you from anything. Everything that we do is from the heart. We truly care. We have people on our staff that deal with epilepsy. So it's it's not something that, um, you know, we haven't dealt with firsthand. Um, we really provide resources and assistance in all realms, not just, um, you know, trainings and education. We have, you um, program services, we have case management, all the way from intake up until when you get to a training. Um, we have an on-staff psychologist. We really try to assist in all realms um, for those that have epilepsy as well as their caretakers. Um, I can definitely say throughout my career, I have never been a part of an organization where I know that the people around me come to work out of choice and not just to collect a paycheck. Um, everybody that is a part of Epilepsy Alliance Florida specifically is truly on a mission, um, is truly doing God's work and truly, truly, truly wants to assist the community and those with epilepsy. We appreciate you being here. We thank you for being here. We thank the uh, Epilepsy Alliance of Florida for doing what they do. And remember, you can always depend on Nova Southeastern University any time that you need any help to uh, need someone to um, talk to in the healthcare areas or in the psychological areas or in the children's areas, because we, we are a multifaceted uh, not-for-profit university, always available, particularly to the public that we serve. So thank you very much for being here today. Remember, folks, I always tell you, you know, we happen to be talking about epilepsy today, but there are a lot of medical issues. You don't feel well otherwise. Please contact your physician. Don't just walk into a pharmacy or a supermarket and pick something off the shelf. Talk to your physicians. They are the people who are giving their lives for you, and you need to take good care of yourself. Remember, this program is called Dateline Health. My name is Fred Lippman. Until next time, see you.